ceremony. Leg bearers are in place. Time, I'd like to ask Chaplain Bob Rossi to perform the convocation. Uncover, okay. O God, the Eternal Father, on this solemn Patriot Day of Remembrance, we bow our heads in memory of 3,000 Americans who died September 11, 2001. We especially raise up Chief Warrant Officer William Root and Commander Ronald Hawk, who died in the Pentagon. May they rest in your everlasting care. Bless our young people, who by their participation here today, their volunteerism, enthusiasm, and patriotism, honor those innocent victims who died that infamous day. Make us agents of correction. Make our world see the power of faith. May our nation know the strength of selfless service, and may our enemies continue to face the inescapable force of freedom, so that through our perseverance there may emerge a better world founded on faith and understanding, a world dedicated to preserving the individual rights and dignity of man, a world of tolerance and justice, and a world intent on loving you and keeping your commandments. For Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today to honor Commander Volk and Chief Warrant Officer Root, who sacrificed their lives for our country. Mount Airy has a long tradition of sacrifice. The names of those heroes are carved into the stones in front of you. But let's also remember their families who also sacrificed. Those warriors, along with Commander Volk and Chief Warrant Officer Ruth, lived a life of devotion, duty, love, and sacrifice. So their children and future generations of Americans could be free. It's these future generations and their community service that we'd also like to honor. The scouting troops assembled here today are a great example of that future. I think you'll agree with me that if everyone would just do their duty, love, give, and demonstrate daily the sacrifice the love their lives represent, we have a very bright future. On this day, 13 years ago, over 3,000 Americans woke up and thought they'd see their families that evening. They did not. Let's always remember them and that tragic loss. May we live each day in a way that is worthy of their devotion to the duty and their ultimate sacrifice. At this time, I'd like to ask the following to join me up the podium. Council President, Peter Helm, Councilman Bob King, Councilman Scott Strong, Councilman Chris Everidge, Chief Stoltz, President Wall, Firefighter Alexander, Firefighter Winfield, I'd like to thank the Marine Corps League, Troop 460, Pac 460, Boy Scouts, Troop 1191, and Boy Scout Troop, and Cub Scout Troop 1191, and the Civil Air Patrol. At this time, I'd like to bring up our guest speaker, Commander Alan Yeager. BFW. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you all, Councilmen, for being here. And uh, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight and attending our Patriot Day ceremony. It's really great to uh, see all the uh, participation. It really makes me uh, proud to be a member of the Mount Airy community, to see all the civilian individuals and also all the groups that are here, the Green Corps League and the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts. It's really, really something to see everybody here. Okay, and it's very important that Americans never forget what Patriot Day is. It is to remember all the victims of 9-11. That terrible tragedy that occurred on the 11th of September, 2001. These attacks began in the morning in New York City when two airplanes hit the twin towers of the World Trade Center, killing almost 3,000 people. This was followed later that morning when a plane crashed into the Pentagon, our nation's military headquarters killing about 184 people. The third and final attack, which most people feel, was actually uh, supposed to hit the White House or the uh, Capitol building, was swore stopped by the heroic passengers on American Airlines Flight 93, excuse me, United Airlines Flight. They could tell by listening uh, receiving phone calls on their cell phones, what was going on, that New York had been attacked in the Pentagon, and when their plane turned around and was heading back to Washington, they, they knew that this plane was going to attack Washington, and they did everything they could to stop it. They rushed into the, the cockpit, and during the struggle, the plane crashed near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and everybody was killed. As I mentioned, the, the attack on the Twin Towers killed almost 3,000 innocent people. It was a horrible attack. In fact, they estimate that 200 people either jumped or fell from the building because uh, they didn't want to be burned in the flames. 
this total includes the passengers on both planes. And it also involves, includes 343 New York City firemen and 60 police officers who heroically tried to rescue the civilians who were trapped in the World Trade Center. However, as you know, the towers collapsed and killed a lot of the firemen and police. As you know, it's already been mentioned that two military members who died in the Pentagon attack were residents of Mount Airy. I will talk briefly about Bill Rood and Ronald Falk in just a few minutes. Just three months after the attack on 9-11, President George Bush signed a congressional resolution proclaiming the next 11th September in 2012 to be Patriot Day, a day to remember all those killed in the terrorist attack. President Obama has continued the same honor, and he added service to this day. It's now officially called Patriot Day and National Day of Remembrance and Service. So he is encouraged or encouraging people not only to remember that day, but to do some kind of public service if you can. I'm sure that most of you were old enough to remember where you were on 9-11, where you were that day that occurred. I remember I was in the uh, Navy Hospital at Bethesda with my wife, and uh, we were there early in the morning and we saw some people watching television across from us and we wondered what was going on so we turned on our television and there was the one tower of the twin towers on fire and everybody thought well this had to be an accident as we were watching the second plane hit then we knew hey, there's something going on here this is a terrorist attack and i know there are a lot of young people today especially the Cub Scouts and the, uh, a lot of the Boy Scouts who are here today who don't really remember anything about that day. But and it's up to us as adults to make sure that they remember what happened that day and they remember the victims of that terrible terrorist attack in New York, in Washington, D.C., and the, when the plane crashed in Shanksville. Chief Ward Officer Bill Ruth and Lieutenant Commander Ronald Falk for the two Mount Airy residents who perished while serving their country. They were working in the Pentagon. I have special feelings about Chief Warrant Officer Bill Ruth because he was commander of VFW Post 10,076 like I am. On September the 10th, he handled his first meeting at the Post next day, he died in the Pentagon. Now, I didn't know him because I just got involved, I got involved in the DFW after 9-11. But it's evident, evident to me from what he accomplished and did during his life, he was a tremendous person who especially loved to serve his country and his citizens. After graduating from high school, he joined the Marines and became the helicopter pilot. He flew helicopters in Vietnam. His main job was evacuating wounded Marines and soldiers from Vietnam's jungles and mountains to carry them back to hospitals. These flights were often very dangerous because the North Vietnamese really could care less whether it was an evacuation helicopter or not. Now, after leaving the Marines, Bill became a school teacher in middle schools of Montgomery County. He taught there for 30 years. He was so patriotic that he continued his service in the military by joining the United States Army Reserve. And what happened to a lot of people who were in the reserve in 1990 and 91, he was activated to serve as Desert Storm and Desert Shield in uh, Saudi Arabia and Iraq. While he was teaching, he also obtained a master's degree. He 
He was working at the Pentagon. His rank was a chief warrant officer. He had two sons. Unfortunately, sadly, one of them had been killed about a year before his death in an auto accident. His surviving son, Sean, is now a student at West Virginia University, and he is serving in the West Virginia National Guard. The other Mount Airy resident who was killed at the Pentagon during the terrorist attack was Ronald Ball, the UK. He was a lieutenant commander in the Naval Reserve. He was from Nampa, Ohio, uh, excuse me, Idaho. He graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 1982. He spent 11 years on active duty. He left but still remained in the Navy Reserve. He was working at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory which was outside Columbia. While there, he also earned a master's degree. He was devoted to his wife, Jennifer, and their son, Liam, who was four years old at the time he was killed. They were living right here in Mount Airy. His wife was expecting a child when he was killed. Their daughter, Megan, was born two months after he was killed in the Pentagon. He was buried in, in a cemetery in his hometown of Nampa, Idaho. Commander Falk and Chief Warrant Officer Ruth have a memorial stone right in front of us here between the two monuments dedicated to those who served in our wars and were killed. We must always remember them and all the people who were victims of 9-11. The innocent victims and those like the firemen and the police officers who died trying to rescue those in the World Trade Center. And all those who were serving in our nation in defense of its freedom, serving in our military. Thank you again for coming and always remember those who died on 9-11. Thank you. the audience to light their candles.